Thank you so much, Richard. I'm just checking to see the time. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want you to know I never tell my wife that I disagree with her. So when it comes to my wife, I agree with everything she says. I simply say, yes, dear, and we've been married for over 40 years. So it's the right policy. Uh, <laughs> Um, we must all fight and expose the frightening propaganda lies that legitimize and support the anti-Semitic BDS movement and support the inappropriate hatred of the Jewish state. We have to write about these issues that I'm going to talk about very briefly, speak about them uh, publicly, talk about them, bring in speakers who tell the truth about these issues. I'm talking about the lies if I have time, I may not, of settlements, apartheid, occupation, Jerusalem, and a Palestinian state. <laughs> settlements, the settlements comprise only 2% of Judea and Samaria. 98% of the West Bank of Judea and Samaria uh, is area, are areas where there are no Jewish communities. Not a single new settlement has been built since 1993, since Oslo. Not a single one. Yet if you read the media, you think there's constant new Jewish communities being, being built. It, all building that Israel has done since 93, since Oslo, have been within the existing borders of the existing communities in 1993. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apartheid state. Apartheid state. Arabs vote. Arabs have a free press in Israel. There's Arab judges and go Arab government ministers and Arab ambassadors and Arab army officers, Arab heads of police, Arab Knesset members, Arab professors and students at every Israeli university, the largest number are in Ariel. <laughs> Arab physicians and surgeons work together side by side with Jewish doctors. Half the patients at Hadassah Hospital are Arab. None of what I just said was true in South Africa. Quite the opposite. So this despicable lie of apartheid has to be fought. And I thought, it's so ridiculous, who needs to talk about it? When I go to college campuses to speak, they all believe it. it I, I was really totally shocked. <laughs> Three, occupation. <laughs> occupation, <laughs> I have Tourette syndrome. I make sounds I can't control. Uh, please forgive me. <laughs> uh, occupation means Israel took over sovereign Arab land. <laughs> The Jews are the indigenous people there. The Jews are from Judea. We are Judeans. Palestinian used to mean Jew. When Britain legally uh, established the Balfour Declaration, they legally gave uh, all of original Palestine uh, to the Jewish state. In 1922, they gave 80% of original Palestine to Jordan. There's only 20% left. In fact, the, the 64 PLO Charter says we we, the PLO, do not exercise any territorial sovereignty over uh, the West Bank and Gaza. They admit it and acknowledge it. In 1988, Jordan relinquished all claims to Judea and Samaria. <laughs> Israel has given away all of Gaza, 40% uh, of Judea and Samaria. That's where 99% of the Palestinian Arabs live. There is no occupation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they have their own parliament, their own schools, their own textbooks, their own newspapers, radio stations, TVs, businesses, a police force. Yes. Israel maintains a military force in those areas only because there's constant terrorist groups evolving to come into Israel to murder Jews. No terrorism, no IDF within the, uh, the Palestinian Arab areas that Israel's given away in Judea and Samaria. <laughs> and even the word Palestine is a Roman name. If this is original Arab uh, land, why is it a Roman name? There's never been any Palestinian kings and queens. There's never been a Palestinian uh, state or an Arab state in that area. <laughs> Jerusalem, one of the gigantic propaganda lies that no Israeli leader or Jewish leader will talk about. <laughs> Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel under King David 3,000 years ago. There's, they have not, there's not been a single nation who's had their cap. There's been never a capital of any other nation except Israel that Jerusalem has been the capital of. <laughs> never. <laughs> when the Arabs conquered Palestine in 716 CE, they made Ramla ca their capital, not Jerusalem. It's called the Temple Mount. Not the mosque mount, because our temples were there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the majority of people living in, in Jerusalem since the mid-1800s have been Jews. This is a Jewish area, a Jewish city. As you, most of you know, the Koran never mentions the word Jerusalem. Not a single time. In our Jewish holy books, 700 times it's mentioned. <laughs> Even when they claim Jerusalem, they say, oh, well, Muhammad had a dream, not a real occurrence, who went from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque. They said the furthest mosque was in Jerusalem. Well, in the Koran, when it says Palestine, Palestine is the closest land. How can the furthest mosque be from Palestine, be from Jerusalem, if Palestine is the furthest land? Jews face Jerusalem, Muslims face Mecca. 
From 48 to 67, when Jordan controlled Eastern Jerusalem, the real Jerusalem, they let it be a slum. There was no, virtually no water, electricity, plumbing. They destroyed 58 synagogues. Not a single Arab leader, not a single one ever visited their holy city of Jerusalem except for King Hussein from Jordan. If it's so damn holy, why didn't all the Arab leaders come there and visit it regularly? <laughs> in fact, uh, oh, Jordan made their capital in Amman. Their royal residence, their universities in Amman, not in Jerusalem. Their holy prayers over loudspeakers on Friday, not from the al Mosque in Jerusalem, from, the, from a mosque in Amman. <laughs> and finally, a Palestinian state, people say, well, solve the problem, just give them a state. <laughs> First of all, they don't want a state. If it means accepting Israel, they don't want a state. They've, give, they've offered a state in 1937 on 95% of the rest of Palestine in 1947-48. In 2000-2008, they said no every single time because it meant they'd have to accept Israel and they won't do it. <laughs> Syria, Iran, and North Korea, they have sovereign states. Does that make them lovely? Creating a state will only be creating a new Hamas around terror state. They bring more danger and, and, uh, and, and disharmony uh, to the Middle East. <laughs> And by the way, this is the uh, emblem <laughs> that the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, the phony martyr, uh, has put together uh, 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 commemorating uh, the Fatah rule. That's all of Israel uh, with an Arab kafia, Arafat, and a Klishkar rifle. That's a real emblem that they commissioned. Is this the type of emblem you commission if you want peace with, this, with the Jewish state? <laughs> peace is impossible solely because the Palestinian Arabs refuse to accept Israel within any borders. Their refusal to even negotiate. Eight years they've not negotiated. <laughs> they have refused to outlaw terrorists groups, end the promotion of hatred and murder in their speeches, schools, and media. They haven't done it. They named schools, streets, and sports teams. And they continue to pay Arabs to murder Jews, for God's sakes. They pay Arabs to murder Jews. And the Taylor Force Act has been watered down. They're only going to lose if they don't change this law. A uh, hundred million out of the four hundred million dollars they get. It's been watered down dramatically. <laughs> uh, and, and of course, they've aligned themselves now with Hamas. We have to say, and I'll end with this, <laughs> the jig is up. We should say, unless they start uh, showing that they're serious about peace, fulfilling all the things I discussed, we should tell them, no more money, no more support. We support Israel in doing whatever they think is necessary, and, and that is the only way we'll have any chance to see if the Arabs will really change their vicious, anti-Israel, anti-humane, uh, anti-Semitic terrorist behavior. Thank you very much.